Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, we're gonna be going through all the puzzles I completed for the month of May. Uh, there's quite a mix here. Some were from some videos I did on this channel, some were from my Instagram feed, and some I just felt like doing. Um, for each puzzle, I'm gonna give you sort of some of my thoughts about it and just a bit of a quick review. And at the end of the video, I'll also let you know which puzzle was my least favorite and which one I also liked the best. So I've only really grouped these according to brand, not in any other particular order. And today I'm just going to, uh, you know, just do a handful at a time because uh, you might be able to hear it in my voice, but I'm still a bit croaky and sick, unfortunately. So to avoid any on camera coughing fits, we'll just take it easy today. So this first one, I actually did a video on very recently and I'll pop any videos uh, that puzzles were in in the cards above. So this is the Fade 1000 piece square gradient by four point puzzles. And yeah, I really enjoyed this sort of funky kind of different take on a gradient puzzle. I like the colors and the sort of 3D image. And yeah, I really actually quite liked the uh, quality. Um, I found it kind of similar to like Genuine Fred or um, even pomegranate a little bit. So if you like those brands, you'd probably like this. Yeah, I found the pieces held together quite well, not too glary, uh, not too much puzzle dust, I don't think. Um, yeah, you could definitely pick up sections and do like a puzzle pickup. So yeah, quite happy and impressed with the quality of the puzzle. Um, spoilers, the only thing I sort of didn't like was the price of this particular brand in Australia. I think it's probably a bit more affordable if you're in the US or North America, but yeah, here in Australia, these are quite expensive. So uh, yeah, I guess if you can get this for a good price, I would definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I yeah did enjoy it. It's definitely a fun gradient to do. So these next couple here um, are fairly recent spring releases. They're part of the spring collection by Soonness and uh, they're collaborations with different artists. So this one is called Marching Spring by Helen Dardick. And yeah, I really uh, enjoyed both of them. So I'll talk about this one a bit more in a minute. So this one I actually also did video on, which will be linked up the top. And yeah, spoilers, I loved it. I just, the packaging and the puzzle are just really luxe and high quality. Um, yeah, just everything's also plastic free. So yeah, there's no plastic shrink wrap. There's no plastic resealable bags. Instead, the puzzle comes in a paper bag that you tear open and then there's also like a replacement paper bag for you to put the pieces in afterwards. And it comes with like a uh, nice poster and postcard. And yeah, it's just really like, was quite a luxurious, uh, very enjoyable puzzling experience from, you know, the outside all the way in, I guess. Um, but yeah, as for the puzzle itself, the pieces are just almost like a very, like they're very smooth, but they have a subtle like matte linen texture but and the pieces are quite uh matte so there's no glare at all they fit together really nicely um you could like pick up sections or do a puzzle pickup yeah i really loved it and of course i love this image um yeah it's just really bright and colorful the whole image is on the back as well but yeah it's just a really fun one to do and um yeah we definitely do more like this it is on the uh high price point end I guess um, but you're definitely getting a lot of quality for your price and something very special and so yes the other spring one that came out with that one was this uh, really fun and cute one uh, called reflections by the artist Jess Chen and I guess I'll just show this side um, yeah it's sort of like this grid of all these really cute kind of digital designed like spring and Japanese inspired designs and little pictures so there's like lots of blossoms and butterflies and plants and things yeah it's just really it was really fun and um, it shared all the same great features and high quality as the last one um, so yeah beautiful packaging and all completely plastic free and pieces just fit really well together um, yeah so really love this one as well and then we've got a couple little ones here so this one was not the greatest quality. Uh, this is called Sushi Cats and it's just a little 500 piece one. Um, and someone told me about it and of course I just had to get it because I'm a crazy cat lady and this is a crazy cat puzzle. 
um, so quirky and weird. And I actually have some of these sushi cat like figurines that I got from Japan a few years ago. So yeah, when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, I need to get it. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's not the greatest image really because there's like a lot of blue sky and a lot of green, but surprisingly it wasn't that hard to put together. Um, yeah, the pieces weren't the greatest quality. They were sort of fairly thin and flat, surprisingly kind of held together sometimes. Um, there wasn't really any puzzle dust from memory, um, but they were a bit glossy and they had like a paper back. So yeah, not, not my favorite puzzle features, that's for sure. Um, but it's just a fun novelty, cute puzzle. It actually also comes with like a tiny little booklet that sort of tells you about the legend of the sushi cat. So it's very quirky and silly. It's definitely like the sort of puzzle you'd give to, as a gift to someone, or if you're like me and you're a fan of the sushi cats, it's something that you kind of want to have in your collection but yeah don't not a fan of the piece quality um but i'm not surprised by it it's sort of i sort of wasn't expecting anything that great but yeah definitely still enjoyed it for what it was and then this one um this is sort of a brand it's called printworks and i've been seeing this one around a lot and sort of have been wanting to try it for a while so this is called dawn and it's a 500 piece puzzle um, and it's like very kind of designery looking, like the box is really nice, like has kind of a matte linen finish on the box and it's very minimal. And it's basically this, yeah, kind of, well, I guess a gradient inspired by dawn, like the dawn sky. And instead of it just being a plain gradient, it has a bit of cloud here, which I quite like. So yeah, I really like the image. I think it's really cool. Um, but unfortunately I was, well, I was hoping that maybe the pieces, pieces would reflect like that of the packaging, like maybe, oh, maybe the pieces will be matte linen finish, but unfortunately they weren't. They were nice and thick and sturdy, but they were really like glossy and had a paperback and had a very loose fit. So you definitely couldn't like pick up any sections. Um, and it was pretty easy to sort of knock them and like send them flying. So yeah, a bit of a pity that the pieces just weren't really that great in my opinion, definitely not my favorite. Um, but I'm still glad that I got to try this brand. Now I know what it's like and yeah, I still think the image is really nice. So I did quite a few Cobble Hill ones this month. Um, so this first one is 1000 pieces and it's called Barista Art. And it's definitely for the coffee lover out there. Even though I don't like coffee though, I still thought it was a cute image. And yeah, it just features all these like cute coffee art pictures. So you got the city and a bear and I think a swan and a puffer fish and a little Africa scene. Yeah, really cute. Um, I quite like the Cobble Hill brand. Um, they're fairly affordable and um, they, I think all of them have irregular piece shapes and they sort of have a matte linen finish. Although sometimes I still find that even though it's like a matte finish, it can still have a bit of sheen. And there is a bit of puzzle dust with these. So they're not perfect, but they are still, you know, fairly good quality. Um, and the piece fit is usually reasonably snug. Um, yeah, so I just really like them as a brand. I think they have a really uh, good variety of images to choose from. Um, yeah, like this one. I haven't really seen anything like this before and it was really fun to put together. Definitely difficult though, I have to say. Like, it wasn't straightforward. Obviously, all the browns and whites made it a bit challenging. But yeah, still, still enjoyed it. And then I did this 500 piece one called Origami Animals and pretty much is what it is called. Um, yeah just features all these lovely colorful yeah origami animals and pretty origami paper and for each one it's sort of got the name in english and also in japanese and then has like a little sort of fortune under each one like the bird says you know it represents longevity luck and love so yeah it's got like a little thing like that under each one um yeah so i really like this one i actually used to make a lot of origami a few years ago and i still have a big stash of origami paper so this one definitely spoke to me um, I guess the only thing is I wish it had origami instructions included. I think that would have been a fun inclusion. Um, but apart from that, yeah, the quality is the same as the 1000 piece ones. The only difference was is that uh, the pieces in this are actually a larger piece size. So the size of the whole puzzle ended up being about the same as the 1000 piece. Anyway, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one. And then I did another very colorful one. Uh, this is a 1000 piece one called Common Quilt Blocks. Um, I'm not at all into quilting, but I really love the look of this. It kind of reminds me of origami paper actually with all the beautiful shapes and patterns. Um, yeah, it was just very fun and colorful and yeah, very beautiful 
designs. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed this one. It was actually fairly easy and very satisfying to put together because it's sort of like a grid of almost mini puzzles. So you could just pick out the ones you wanted to work on first and do those. Yeah, so I really enjoyed it. Also the same great quality as the other two. And then I did this, uh, another very colorful puzzle here with patterns. There's a bit of a theme going on here, I think. So this is a 300 piece one from Ravensburger. This is a large piece format. So the uh, total size of the puzzle end up being pretty much the same as a standard 1000 piece. Um, but yeah, I quite liked it. I really love the image. Um, this one's called Washi Wishes. And I actually collect washi paper. I mean, yeah, washi tape, I should say as well, not paper. Um, yeah, so I have a lot of that as well uh, in my spare room. Um, I seem to collect a lot of things, I think. Um, anyway, yeah, I really just found this one to be very beautiful and fun and colorful and pretty easy to put together. Um, yeah, really glad to have it in my collection. And interestingly, um, the pieces held together pretty well and actually didn't have very much puzzle dust. So I'm normally always going on about how much dust there is in Raven Ravensburger puzzles, but this one actually didn't have much at all. So yeah, kind of pleasantly surprised. But yeah, if you sort of want a fun, smaller piece count, or you're looking for something with larger pieces that isn't too challenging, uh, yeah, definitely would recommend this one. I really enjoyed it. And the last one from this stack, I've got a few more to go through after this, is this uh, very fun and quirky uh, Catachino puzzle from New York Puzzle Company and it's 1,000 pieces. Yes, that's right, <laughs> couldn't remember. Um, yeah, it just features this quirky image of a cat that's sort of also a cappuccino cup, like its tail is the handle and it's sort of as if you're in like an Italian cafe or restaurant with the sort of red and white checkered tablecloth and this sort of kind of vintage wallpaper, which was very hard, might I add, both that. This is quite a challenging puzzle, both the wallpaper and the sort of checkered tablecloth were pretty tricky to do. Um, this was my first time doing this brand and it was definitely, it had its good points and bits that I didn't like. So I love the image um, and it has a regular piece shapes, which I quite enjoyed. And the pieces were fairly like thick and sturdy, but they were very loose. So I wasn't a huge fan of that. And there was like a bit of sheen and obviously it was a tricky image to do. So yeah, it had pros and cons, but you know, I think I would still definitely do more of these. I mean, I do have another couple in my collection that I'm keen to try out as well to see if they're like the same as this or not. Um, but yeah, I think even though like, yeah, the pieces were a bit on the loose side, I still had fun doing this and yeah, just really love the image. So we're down to the last pile that I completed for this month. So I've got a couple here from Pezzle Puzzles, um, which I actually did a video on the sort of collection. So I'll link that up the top as well. Um, yeah, so the first one is Sugar Daddy, which is a very cheeky named puzzle. And yeah, basically it's a very uh, quirky and cheeky image. I guess someone who's not wearing very many clothes, but has an apron on is sort of making all these like sweets and baked goods. And the word daddy is spelled out in sugar. So yeah, very quirky image. But um, yeah, if you have seen me uh, post about these or do a video, you'll know that I quite enjoyed them. Um, they have very like they have basically a soft touch uh, surface on the packaging and also the pieces. Um, yeah, the packaging is really luxe. Like the puzzles come in um, a fabric zipper bag and also there's a poster and the poster is also like soft touch. Um, so it's all very yeah luxe and feels very high end and it's a very fun experience. And yeah, all their packaging and um, puzzle images are very like quirky and weird and very bright and colorful. So yeah, I quite enjoyed enjoyed doing these. I um, had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so the pieces fit pretty snugly together. Um, sometimes there's been false fits, sort of depends on the puzzle, I guess. Um, this one I think was pretty good. Um, there's not much puzzle dust from memory and yes, yeah, soft touch surface and they, they're completely matte, which is really cool. So if you've ever done like Art and Fable, it's a little bit like that. Um, not quite as luxe feeling, but similar, like it has a similar soft touch and yeah, completely like no sh sheen or glare at all. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I think both on this one and this next one, there were like a few little bent tabs. There's been uh, with this series, it's actually like the first 
series that this company's ever put out. So there have been a few little quality issues or teething problems, but mostly things just like some bent tabs and things like that, which does happen in a lot of puzzles and with a lot of different brands, you can get damaged pieces. Um, but yeah, overall I had a really great time with these and yeah, if you're looking for something fun and a bit out there, I definitely would suggest trying the Pezzle puzzles. They're yeah, pretty, pretty fun and quirky. And the other one that I did from them is another 1000 piece one called Nectar of the Gods. And it's a very, uh, quite a pretty image actually. It's also pretty weird and quirky as well. Basically features this sort of like Grecian statues. I think it's sort of meant to represent like you're in heaven or something because all these like clouds and blue sky and colorful flowers. But then it also has these coffee cups like spilling coffee beans everywhere. So another coffee puzzle for coffee lovers out there. Uh, which is not me, but I still thought this is a really fun image to do. And yeah, um, it was definitely a bit tricky. Um, like the flowers and coffee and stuff was pretty straightforward. But then of course the blue sky and all the like white statues and columns and stuff was pretty tricky to do. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it and it shares all the same sort of features and like uh, good quality as the other ones um, from the series. So yeah, the nice soft touch and snug fit and yeah, just really like fun to do. And then one that wasn't so fun to do is this 500 piece from, I think it's Cardinal or also Spin Master. I'm not really sure. I guess Cardinal's sort of the brand or anyway, this was part of a set. I've previously done the other one. It like it came as two puzzles for like the pro like a fairly affordable or cheap price. Um, so this one's called Coffee Time. And yeah, both puzzles were sort of done by the same artist, like the same sort of art style and kind of like, I guess, sister images. Um, so yeah, this one basically features uh, like people kind of, I guess, enjoying donuts and sweet, ba like baked goods and coffee, um, another coffee puzzle. Um, yeah, so I really like the artwork, no doubt about that. But yeah, the pieces were very like thin. They're very large, which is fine, but they were very thin and they were had such a loose fit like if you just even bumped your puzzle board all the pieces went flying so yeah really kind of disliked the pieces not a fun puzzling experience yeah which is a pity because the artwork is really cool um so i don't think i'd i wouldn't recommend this brand and i don't think i'll be trying them again but you know i am still glad that i did try them to sort of see for myself what i thought about them but yeah unfortunately i uh, won't be doing any more of these ones and then um, a puzzle I also just did a video on, which will again be linked up the top, is this Eurographics uh, Cookie Party Puzzle, which is actually one of their ones in a tin. Um, so I've actually done quite a few before, but it's been a while and I was sort of curious about trying the ones in the tins out. So I thought it was a good opportunity to do a video on it and try it out. Um, so I really like the image. I thought it's really fun and colorful and I love that the tin is very decorative and embossed and yeah it's all the packaging's really nice it comes in a uh like a ziploc bag and uh there's like a little poster and yeah the tin is nice you can display it or collect it whatever you want um not super practical in terms of like being able to sort all the pieces in it because um, it is a 1000 piece puzzle so it's a bit too small for that so i did have to sort of sort it using uh sorting trays um but yeah the unfortunately for me though i didn't really enjoy the puzzling experience all that much um, so the pieces were irregular shaped which is fine and they were had like lovely the printing was like crisp and bright and colorful so nothing wrong with that but the fit of the pieces pieces was just really really loose so um, yeah again if you like just bumped it you'd send them all flying and also even at the end I found like a lot of the pieces were just not sort of sitting flat like you'd flatten one bit and another bit would sort of stick up so it was a bit frustrating um but yeah I, I still really like Eurographics as a brand overall because they do actually have other style puzzles with like actually different piece shapes and piece fit so um, I've definitely got some in my collection that have definitely stayed together much better than the, uh, the ones in this puzzle did so yeah I think like you know if you've tried some of the other puzzles from them you might find them to have nicer pieces than this one so yeah maybe maybe don't go for these ones but 
definitely give the other ones in like the normal boxes a go. Um, but yeah, pity because I really, really liked the image though. And then the last puzzle for this month, which I'm actually still, uh, as you're watching this video, I will have finished it um, because I'm filming this on the very last day of May, so it still counts. Um, so I've nearly finished this one, but I've just got the box lid here. And this is my first time trying this brand, which is uh, Jackaroo Puzzles. And I believe they are, uh, they're Canadian. And I think, I'm not sure if they're from, I think they're from Quebec. I could be wrong, but they're definitely from Canada. Um, and I've heard good things about them. And so I was like really interested, interested in trying them. And they uh, recently started getting stocked at a uh, Australian uh, puzzle uh, puzzle shop. So yeah, I was able to grab this one. And this one's called Quilted Hearts and it's 1000 pieces. And yeah, it's just really fun and colorful and very like a rainbow. And yeah, it has all these cute like little squares with like, it's almost like again, doing mini puzzles, like this sort of grid of all these like pretty little love hearts and they're all a bit different and yeah they're really I'm really enjoying doing this one at the moment um I'm really enjoying the quality actually the pieces are actually feel very similar to the uh four point puzzle pieces or I guess Janu and Fred or something like that except they're very glossy I guess like this box lid they're quite have quite a glossy finish but yeah the pieces are fairly like a nice thickness and they fit together really well and you can pick up sections, which is really good for this puzzle because I can like work on one of the hearts in front of me and then move it to its correct spot afterwards. And yeah, so I'm really liking the fit and there hasn't been too much dust at all. And yeah, so I'm really, yeah, really enjoying it. Quite pleased with it. Um, yeah, I guess my only um, issue with it is I don't quite like the glossy surface, but it hasn't been too, too problematic actually when puzzling like I thought there'd be way more sheen that but there actually hasn't been too much so yeah I've been pleasantly surprised and yeah so far so good and I think um, I probably would be definitely open to trying more designs from this company so for my least favorite uh this month this was a fairly easy decision um, I ended up picking the 500 piece uh, coffee time puzzle from Cardinal uh, just for the reasons I stated I think the quality was pretty awful to be honest and fairly cheap and yeah just a very uh it was just a very frustrating and not very fun puzzling experience um it's a pity pity because it has such a nice image um it, hopefully we can see uh, other artwork from this artist on some better quality puzzles in the future and then for the puzzle that is my most favorite this month this was a bit more tricky because there were definitely other puzzles that were on par with this one but i ended up choosing the marching spring puzzle from soonness um, i just love the image it's so bright and cheerful and colorful and fun it also has a cat in it over here on the back so you know that's that's a win right there um, but of course i really enjoyed the puzzling experience and the sort of yeah the the whole packaging and puzzle and everything it was very like luxurious very high-end um, you know everything just sort of fit together and worked and it was just really nice so yeah it was just a really pleasant and easygoing and enjoyable puzzling experience so yeah this is my uh, most favorite puzzle for the month of May so I didn't quite get as many puzzles completed for the month of May as I would have liked I definitely got a lot more done in April than this month um, I guess this month I was just a bit sick unfortunately and a little bit busy and I also didn't have this sort of added uh, pressure and motivation of a puzzle competition to sort of spur me on so I think that was definitely a factor for last month but I was still really happy with all the ones I got to try I definitely think there was a good variety here and a lot of fun colorful ones and um, some really nice quality puzzles too so I guess in the comments below let me know what you thought of all these puzzles that I completed have you done some of them yourself are there any on your wish list yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. You can also find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.